then I think we can put the name of the school. Okay. Can you, yeah. Oh, just I'm gonna type, I'll type that in the chat for you right now. Awesome. Okay, Scotty. Okay, where's chat? Do, 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 chat. Okay. All right, I started recording because I didn't want to forget. Uh -huh. Okay, Scotty. Okay, Jung Jia Bong Ivy Experimental High School. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm gonna need to copy and paste that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, um, here we are, our last meeting. Um, so I, I read everything you sent me, your reflection, your annotations, and rating yourself on the rubric. So. Mm -hmm. If you want, we could talk a little bit about um, what you said in your reflection about some of the struggle and frustrations you had with that lesson. Mm -hmm. But what I like, how I liked uh, in your reflection, what you did was in a different situation and a more typical teaching situation, yeah. how it would have been. So um, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, I, I think that that's a big key because with Teach Now, I've seen a lot of videos where it looks like there are eight kids in the class. Yeah. And so let's go, fair is fair. You put me in that kind of situation where I'm very well trained in ESL, beyond the 120, standard 120 hours that puts teachers uh, into you know places like Korea or China. Right. Um, um, I've taken an extra course uh, uh, program through uh, University of Saskatchewan. Uh, I've taken, you know, lots of linguistics and advanced grammar and developing materials and, you know, a bunch of other stuff. And so um, I know full well, you know, the limitations of what happens when you get more than 12 in a classroom. I understand that probably using a horseshoe for an ESL class is probably the best mm -hmm. default setup before you get into group work. And I've even seen in some Teach Now things where there were situations where they could have been and should have been using a horseshoe and they weren't. And they weren't. And so the teacher couldn't be a center focus, but sharing the focus with everyone. The teacher didn't have the ability to go around in behind students and check. And right. so, you know, there, there are lots of things. So I, I see lots of little things. That's why I wanted to say to compare, um, you know, get rid of this 85 online where the students don't have to pay attention. They don't have to hand in their homework and give me, give me a class more like eight students where chances are they're most likely there. Not necessarily intrinsic mo motivation. I mean, it can be in extrinsic that they've got their reasons. Like they want to learn the English so that they can say get into university or something like that, right. but they're much more motivated, much, much easier to yeah. work with. Yeah. So let's so let's look at the context mm -hmm. that you were forced to teach under. So you had 85 students. Mm -hmm. um, you said they were three classes combined, right? Yeah. And you didn't know all of them, right? All the students. Correct. Um, they were actually instructed to not put their cameras on. They were instructed that they really don't have to participate. They were instructed that they even don't have to do the homework. So right. there, there's no expectations for them to engage and participate. Um, Correct. So working under those conditions, you've got to give yourself credit for giving it the old, what's the term, college try, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm not really good with cliches. My sons always laugh at me that I say it, like I combine mm -hmm. two of them. I'm like, I never was good with cliches. Mm -hmm. But um, so you got to give yourself credit for that. I give you credit for that. Yeah. I don't know how I would have performed under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So um, and what you excel in is using humor to get you through those moments of struggle. Um, so, and I, you did say something in your, 
annotation or reflection that typically you don't want to use an interpreter, everything's to be spoken in English. But in this situation, I do agree with you, it was appropriate to have mm -hmm. um, an interpreter to speak. Mm -hmm. But then we did lose her towards the end. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that was just a glitch. She just, yeah. uh, um, wh 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 whether or not the situation was true or not, yeah, you know, she just said, oh, I, I lost the internet or whatever. Yeah. Which is, I, yeah. I can't remember. So and that's understandable, but also in, in China, because of losing faith, there might have been something else. She might have been gone for another reason. So, you know, for whatever thing. But the interesting thing was that was that I called on Callisto, and yeah. I I made a note of explaining about how I had the three monitors. Yeah, Callisto was the one I didn't know, and Callisto didn't okay. show up was necessarily being the best choice for that kind of thing, and. Uh, when it came time to submit an answer for that question, Callisto didn't didn't submit. Ivy, um, the other one, didn't submit. But Yo-Yo, one of my monitors, did. Okay. Yeah. Good. So um, I want to approach these standards as of the educator that you are and have been and could be. So we're going to take everything into consideration. The video, uh, you as an educator in a brick and mortar setting uh, and or an online setting that wasn't so outrageous of 85 kids with instruction of you don't even have to participate. So mm -hmm. how many kids just logged in and stepped away, right? So um, thinking back to when I was that age, might have been something I would do. So. <laughs> So, um, so let's, let's take the standards um, and rate them accordingly from me as your mentor. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. So um, standard one, developmentally appropriate instruction and understanding learning. Do you use knowledge about students' growth and development to design and implement develop, developmentally appropriate and challenging learning experiences? Do you use instructional strategies that are developmentally appropriate for students based on their strengths, interests, needs, and understands how students construct knowledge, acquire skills, and develop discipline thinking? Do you think you're at least at a proficient? No, definitely at least. Yeah. I, right? I, I like to consider myself outstanding. And that's, uh, I, I mean, this is, this is what I kind of live for. Um, the chance to be able to create these kinds of situations. I, I could tell you about the interesting one when we had Clinton versus Trump. And I'm teaching in a class, I had about 20 in it, um, a night class in, in college. And what we did was we, we did like a mock election. So we started with, okay, who wants to be a candidate for people put their hands up? So then we break it up, we group it up, each person's got a group. So it's like, you guys are like a group of people and this is your candidate and you're supporting the candidate like you're in the office. Now you think about it, things like maybe you gotta do speech writing or stuff like that. You know, you gotta, gotta support in other ways. Um, you know, maybe okay. advertising and then, and then, um, then you're going to actually have a debate and, cool. and you're actually gonna get some controversy. And so I gave controversy halfway through, after they had developed their speeches, I gave controversy to each group, like, um, what was one? Uh, uh, okay, um, you, uh, they, they, you say that you want to support the idea of having KFC outlets on campus, because the campus food is pretty bad, right? Yeah. At the same time, you are getting kickbacks from KFC. Mm. And so, yeah. And so that ended up being a fun thing because they yeah. had to deal with that. Yeah, different. what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm joking. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you're pushing me off. You can sit next to me, but you're literally pushing me off. Okay. Well, I need that to charge. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, Dave. Okay. Now that's a hands-on, reaching, critical thinking, Higher love, higher order of thinking. I love it. Um, meeting students' needs. Do, do you use strategies that meet students' cognitive, linguistic, social, emotional, and physical needs? Candidates 
instructional strategies meet the needs of all students at some level. Candidate designs and implements instructions to meet the cognitive, linguistic, social, emotional, physical needs. All right, so, so um, are your strategies all encompassing or do you think there's you, just a few or some of them? No, no, I, I mean, it's all encompassing. Yeah. If we're dealing with that concept of the smaller room than the physical, we go ahead and set it up. Right. If there's anyone with special needs, then we can see it. Um, you know, similarly with linguistic needs, um, you know, I'm, I'm that's what you do. I'm what, <laughs> I, I don't want to call myself a linguistic master, but I do understand different <laughs> tools. So I understand different ways of, of going out and trying to, to ask and to help, to help people to, uh, to, to see if they can express what they want to express without me having to put the, the words into their mouth. Right. So yeah. when, so when you were teaching in the classroom, and I know culturally, um, they really don't like to identify students as mm -hmm. a student with special needs or a student with disability, um, like we do in America. So mm -hmm. what, what strategies or tactics and approaches would you take if you saw a student that was struggling more than just not understanding a concept, but true struggle of a possible diagnosis of a learning disability or something? Well, that, that, that's a difficult thing. If, if you're talking what uh, I, I, I actually would have done in that situation is, you know, it's kind of like very little. At first I note it, then I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the, the Chinese homeroom teachers um, okay. to, to notify them of the problem, to ask, to see what we can do. And generally, there might be along the lines of they're not getting their homework done, then what can we do to, um, you know, can, can they get the, the person to get it done. Um, now, as I mentioned, like in this past year, I was kind of overworked and overstressed. So I wouldn't right. think about the idea of it, but now I'm probably more relaxed and I would know and understand think of coming up with different options. So um, something to be doing, dealing with the homework is coming up with different ways of supporting it or different levels or something like that. And that's just a start. Yeah. Yeah. So with differentiation, I always teach about the four Ps Normally, you'll see the three P's, presentation, mm -hmm. how you're presenting the content, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, process, everyone processes differently mm -hmm. and um, different modes of processing, modalities of processing. But also, when you pro probably look at a math problem and process it like that, me, it takes a while. So are mm -hmm. we taking consideration in different lengths of processing? This is where I put an extra P in there, practice. How often do they get to practice the skills that they're learning within the content and within this? So practice, and how are they gonna practice? Mm -hmm. And then the final one is the presentation, or I mean the product, right? How mm -hmm. are they going to show you what they learned and what they know? So I always talk about the four Ps where a lot of people- you Wanna want hear something funny? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the, the, the new word isn't practice. The new word you gave me was process. Really? Yeah, for us it was presentation, practice, production. And I've always learned that it was presentation, process, and um, production. You're probably looking at it from a psychological point of view or whatever, something of special needs and dealing with how they're processing it. It's like, it's not a case of how it's processing. It's like, put the thing out there, show them, give them a bunch of practice. Now the process is more intuitive. As they're practicing, you should be milling around and checking in on them, seeing you know, if you can help ideas or seeing if you see a global problem bringing yeah. that to everyone. Yeah, and maybe because of my perspective and where I raised up within the education curriculum and training, right, is towards ex exceptional needs. Mm. And and just being Scotty's mom, how mm -hmm. he processes things might be a little differently, mm -hmm. but he is capable. I just have to give him time to listen to the directive. And mm -hmm. speaking of processing, you can't just, I can't just give out three to four directives and expect everyone to follow him. You probably could follow those four directives. I might forget the last one. Mm -hmm. Someone like Scotty, you have to, I could maybe give him two, but I need him to process one at a time, you know? So 
maybe mm-hmm. that's why I, my perspective has always been that it was process and not practice and you were practice and not process. That's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Good. Thanks for sharing that. You too. All right. So do you create a positive classroom climate by making students feel valued and share respect for one another? Uh, you make students feel valued and help them learn to respect each other. Absolutely. Yeah, that's your proficient. And then you value students and promote positive and respectful interactions among students to help them learn to respect each other. So you're, you definitely mm. respect your students. Um, is there an example of where you encourage, you know, treat others how you want to be treated in your classroom? Mm. Did I ever, did I, I'm not sure if I wrote it up or whatever, and gave the Aikido uh, explanation. Every now and then, if, if a group is actually showing no energy whatsoever, they're showing no energy, then, then basically it's a global lack of respect. It's right. not that they're being mean and rude, but they're not respecting that they're actually there to be learning and yeah. uh, with the global energy that they can help each other. And uh, um, <clears throat> the example I give, and this is funny, this is actually how I learned to, to swing dance, is uh, I um, give someone a pen, right? So they got a pen, Sharpie. And uh, I say, okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to try to stab me, like you're, you're gonna try to kill me, right? Yeah, okay. Go ahead and stab me. And uh, they're like looking at me like, huh? <laughs> it's like no okay um go ahead and try to stab me and so they go hmm. Hmm. And i'm like no 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 go ahead and try to stab me like you're killing me hmm. i go no do it do it <laughs> just get it done or we're gonna stand here all day just try to do it like you're trying to kill me and then they're boom, boom. and it very instantaneously and quickly things happen so i'm in a certain position that's called kamai in in um, um you got your your feet on funny angles uh, but you're able to move in just about any direction and keep your balance and so the trick is wherever that hand goes you maybe clear your body out you immediately here's the hand going like that you're grabbing at the wrist and you actually give them a plug a pull and they go off balance right yeah. You still have your balance. What's the instinct? That's my knife. I want to kill you. They try to pull it back. Okay, go with them. And you actually swing them around. If you swing them around, then you can actually bring them into a dip. It's really, really a fun, fun, fun. maneuver. And that's how I learned. That's how I learned to swing dance from that. Very cool. From that maneuver. But the whole key as we discuss it is, I'm saying, without your energy. I can't do anything. Right. I would have to lose my balance in order to get that done. But if you give your energy, even if it's negative energy, we can do this kind of thing, glorify. I can, you know, get you to lose the weapon and leave you in a better place. Uh, so leave us in a better place. Uh, bye. Bye. His dad's here, so I'll leave. Ah, okay. Got it. I'm going to put the light on it in this room. Okay, cool. Katrina, did you want to go outside, Katrina? No. Oh, hi, Bull. A little darker out here. Holy cow. Uh Uh-oh. All right. It's weird sitting somewhere else besides my room. I, I get to see your dark side. Yeah, they look how dark that wall is. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so now I have Bo. So I, I got rid of Scotty. Now hi, I'm Bo. Like, hi, Bo. You want to say hi? Bo looks. Bo looks a little more serious. He looks kind of sad. What's going on? Not really? Well, he had the room to himself. What? <laughs> now he's got to share it. No one knows personal space in this house, including my dogs. Okay. Okay, I love you too. All right, so. Come here. I love you too. 
you gotta let me work so there we go look how cute look at how cute look he doesn't care <laughs> oh how cute all right oh my gosh Bo I don't know who's worse you were Scotty okay so do you use knowledge about individual differences in diverse cultures to develop inclusive learning environments that support all students in meeting high standards? You make appropriate and timely accommodations using appropriate instructional strategies for students with learning differences or language learning development needs. That's proficient. Mm -hmm. uh, outstanding is you're consistent in making appropriate and timely accommodations in both instructional strategies and assessments for students with learning differences and or language development needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that this is absolutely key. And, and basically, um, <clears throat> because I'm dealing with, you know, they're all ELL from the same culture, if we're talking about students in China, right. it becomes less, less of something to look at. But uh, when I was in the full ESL school, um, where I had to do my practicum last year, that's where I took my first TESOL. Um, you know, they, they're students from all nationalities. And yeah. so you, you need to, um, you know, be able to accommodate for, um, um, you know, uh, certain, um, you know, people, they, the male and the female need to sit on the far side of the room. Um, you need to uh, have an assessment strategy uh, for a certain group of people, and I won't name what group of people because they're known to all share the exact same thing. <laughs> they will do that. This happens. And so you have to actually come up with uh, um, alternate tests or whatever. So when they're looking at it, they can't all go, okay, C, D, you know, or whatever. Right. Tap on the table four times. That's a D or something like that. You can't, you can't do that. Um, you know, with learning differences or, 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 or language development needs, you just have to be key and focused and understanding of the heterogeneous nature in the class and be able to support um, um, the, the ones that lower need, or a, a greater need um, with, with whatever you have in place. It may be uh, someone from their country who can help them out or whatever. It might be grouping and having heterogeneous groups um, you know, it might be, uh, having knowledge of that student, um, and taking an extra interest or a, an extra effort to add something in to a certain lesson that peaks into that person's interest. You know, maybe, maybe you're talking about buying stuff and negotiating stuff and you happen to know that this, this one student that wants to buy something or interested in buying something and all of a sudden, well, that's the subject or something like that. You know, different, different, uh, um, you know, ways that, that you're definitely looking at people as individuals and where possible, it's not just taking the basic lesson and like driving a truck straight through. Right, right. Um, and that's where all the different learning styles come in. Um, parent, yeah pairing visuals with words for your language learners. Um, all right. Do you create environments that support individual and collaborative learning, positive social interaction, active engagement and learning and self-motivation? You collaborate with students to establish a safe, positive learning climate in the classroom that supports respect among students. You collaborate with students and families to build a safe, positive learning climate of openness, mutual respect, support, and inquiry. So I guess the key here is um, the outstanding is we're adding the element of parent communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Do you have that opportunity where you taught or is it set up differently? I mean, never where I've taught. Um, you know, I, I, I um, seven years ago, you know, eight years, eight years ago, 
eight years ago, I was practicing to teach something like IELTS in China. So I'm dealing with these students who want to get in the university and no, I, I don't have anything to do with their parents and in any of the schools I've been in in China, no. Yeah. Um, so uh, nowhere, the, the only time a parent came across my desk was um, um, she wanted to apologize profusely for her son who skipped class. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, because it brings shame to the parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these cultural differences. I keep mm -hmm. learning more and more. Mm -hmm. Do you create environments that are student-centered rather than teacher-centered? Do students have the opportunity to make choices to make um, or take responsibility for their own learning? Do you establish a student-centered classroom in which the students collaborate with each other and the candidate becomes a co-learner who facilitates discussions and activities that engage students in learning? You establish a student-centered classroom in which students participate in decision-making, engage in exploration, invention, work collaboratively and independently, and engage in deeper learning experience. Um, I remember vividly in your annotations and feedback that you're fully aware that that lesson was teacher-centered. However, it's not a typical case for when you're in the brick and mortar classroom or mm -hmm. under different online virtual classroom mm -hmm. settings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my question is um, falling between proficient and outstanding. What are your thoughts? Well, it, it's simple. It's outstanding. And, and, and it, it, this is if we just base it on if I'm allowed to have that smaller class because the smaller class you have, the more easy it is to offer up you know, the opportunities to make decisions, the more uh, uh, easy it is to offer chances for them to explore and you're, you're there as support, as helping to facilitate, uh, helping them to understand why would you search this way instead of that way? Why do you search on Google instead of searching on Baidu where you can get the stuff and see Chinese stuff? You know? mm -hmm. Um, et cetera, et cetera, working collaboratively. I mean, it, it, it's like you're, you're there, you're guiding and you're facilitator. And this is, this is definitely what I want to be. And it takes minimal um, um, presentation, um, you know, presentation just to give them the structure, give them something to work with, have them working with, uh, it's like communi communicative language teaching, having them using language which they already know, add it together with something that you've got them, uh, given them to try to go ahead to make a better product, and we're looking at it in different imaginative ways. And, and um, yeah, the, the, that's what I want to be. All right, so I want to be fair. Mm -hmm. So I know that's what you want to be, but where are you now in the in the proficient see i i would say proficient getting close to outstanding when you mm -hmm. have the opportunity to get back to a, a different normal of teaching i don't know how else to say you know yeah, well, I, I mean I, I mean i i wouldn't argue with that if we have to okay. say that that's where i am yeah the whole point is 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 it that's where i am or is is it is it how do we rate rate me when I'm teaching the class that I want to teach? I mean, like um, teach now has these videos with these eight kid classes. I know. You put I'm me gonna... in these, you put me in these eight kid classes, and then yeah. it, it's absolutely outstanding. You put me in a thirty person class, and it's a different story. And 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 I'm the same yeah. person. True. So I, that, that that's why I, I'm not necessarily the fondest with the rubrics at times. Yeah. Like, like like the one before had had the concept of family in it. Okay, I, and yeah. so because I didn't have interaction with family, then I get dinged. And right. That, that, that's, and to me, that doesn't make any sense. In um, evaluating standard one to get outstanding, you have to have a high quality video. What does that have to do with standard one? Absolutely nothing. That's my pet peeve. Sorry. I hear I, I hear you. When um, yeah. I ended up being a pretty good uh, editor and putting videos together because of Teach Now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, I mean, yeah. I, when I was a <laughs> candidate, I would it just seemed like I spent a lot of time 
trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. I didn't have the right software. I really was a novice. I had no idea. Now I love putting little videos together. Oh, it would be a lot of fun if I if I knew how to do it and knew where to look. Right. Um, but yeah, I was for yeah, I was definitely forced to do it, and I just. Mm -hmm. And that is when you talk about differentiation, we're coming from a generation where we, that wasn't part of, we weren't creating mm -hmm. videos. And I know part of the tech world now and mm -hmm. digital learning, and I get that, but we're from a, a different generation of how we presented our work, you know? Mm -hmm. So, all right. So do you have established norms and procedures that lead to engage students maximum time on task and logical management of classroom space. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is another one where um, this one is the proficient plus using technology or digital tools to monitor and manage the learning environment. And you said you were like the class JoJo guru, right? Yeah. I remember that conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, do you understand subject area concepts and tools of inquiry to make the content accessible and attainable to all students? Yeah, I think, I think this is one of your strong suits, connecting um, prior knowledge. And you're also very good at um, reading the situation and evaluating and assessing if they are quite if they're understanding it and if not you kind of backpedal and review or reteach or mm -hmm. um yeah you're good at that too mm -hmm. all right so do you use appropriate instructional resources that are comprehensive accurate and appropriate for student uh evaluates and modifies instructional resources including appropriate tech to ensure they are comprehensive accurate and appropriate for student and instructional resources they're pretty much the same, close. Mm -hmm. uh, do you design and implement student projects to guide students in analyzing the complexities of an issue? So this lesson aside, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember our previous conversations. Are, are, you, are you pretty active in pro um, project-based learning? That was going to be the whole basis of, right? of what I was going to do the second semester. Um, during the Spring Festival, I designed yeah. up stuff uh, for it and I, I had designed it. I had designed down to how I was going to uh, have teams learn to integrate. That was writing up a unit for a week yeah. just in that. I remember that. Yeah. And just the debate alone is cross disciplinary skills, right? Mm -hmm. So not only are you teaching a language, you're giving civics, government, mm -hmm. politics, right? Mm -hmm. Communication. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you develop and implement lessons that are related to real world problems relevant to students and interdisciplinary in nature? Candidates engage students in actively applying content knowledge to real world problems, local, national, or global. Yeah, you were just telling me, right, about the debate and the project mm -hmm. you were going to do, integrating current interdisciplinary themes. Did I ever tell you about how I introduced my, myself to students um, this past year? Because, I, of course, I want them to like me, right. but also to see the intelligence and to explain how the course is going to go. And I go, okay, so this course is global perspective. I came across this one two weeks ago, just before I uh, flew to China. And uh, so what do you guys think about Trump? Good guy, bad guy, you know, like that, right? And then go, okay, so um, he's got this trade war with China and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, okay, well, is, that, is, that, is that good for the world, um, you know? Um, and they're like, well, you know, and whatever. And I go, okay, consider this thought. Okay, if Trump keeps up this trade war with China, then, um, things are going to be kind of more expensive. You're going to have, you know, less, you know, less demand because the prices are more expensive, and thus you're going to get less stuff produced, right? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, well, you get less stuff, less produced, then you're going to get um, less emissions in the atmosphere, right? Yeah. 
Okay, and then maybe with less, less emissions in the atmosphere, you're going to get a, a slowing in global warming. Yeah. So Trump may end up being remembered as the best president of the 21st century because of his global and because of his economic war with China. And they just about peed their pants over that one. Right. Oh, my goodness. Good thing I wasn't in that class. <laughs> I wouldn't have been objective. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, good thing I'm not teaching history or U.S. government right now. Oh, God. Uh, uh, all right. So does the, do you use the proper assessment methods to engage students in their own growth, monitor student progress, and guide the candidates' planning? You effectively balance the use of formative, summative assessments as appropriate to support. You wrote some really um, good self-reflection of how the formative assessment has recently been added to your forte, right? Through Teach yes. Now and this journey. Yeah. Yes. And you see the benefit, like what, just what's the benefit? How, what's been the benefit for you to implement those formative assessments? Well, okay, I, I would say it wouldn't have been there structured in my mind before this past year. Then when I started during this past year, I, I was like a chicken with the head cut off. I didn't know what I was doing. I kept on asking for help. What do we do in this teaching the course that was not laid out well? The people teaching it hadn't done the courses before. There was mm. High level demand. Oh no, what are they going to do if the marks are really poor and, you know, right. all the stupid mental pressure, right? And so I really didn't know about what homework to give out. Should I be giving homework out, uh, taking it in? How do we market, it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then gradually, and probably through, and uh, I don't know if you know about the case, Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo was the monitor I chose from right. class six. And I did not choose Yo-Yo because she was the best student from class six. I choose her because because she's somebody I definitely can work with. I know I can communicate with. Right. Um, in working one-on-one -on -one with her, I could see how she improved. And this was started with me seeing bad handwriting with her. Mm -hmm. And then that led into me keeping a focus on her. And then as I kept the focus on her, then I could see how I could bring around some suggestions to help her improve. Um, and that became a surprise during this semester when all of a sudden I'm trying to hand out work. Yo-Yo is one of the only ones turning it in. Wow. Uh, I had two classes, um, 40 minutes, where I had to sit in the room in case they want to come for question period during their nighttime, my morning. Nobody ever came except for Yo-Yo came once and I worked with her for 75 minutes. And so wow. this became a key to me is that if you have the formative assessment data, um, then you can see the patterns and you can see where you can move ahead, where mm -hmm. what needs to be worked on it as you're going along. But I also see it as a twofold thing because I don't see that it all has to be data. I, I see the formative assessment happening in the moment, basically all the time. Yeah, right. Because they can be low tech, walking around, checking for understanding. Are they, you know, are they on the right track? Mm -hmm. um, doesn't always have to be the, this huge thing. They can be low tech, understanding. Right. Yeah, very yeah. good. I'm so glad. Yeah. That, um, I really am glad that Teach Now has um, supported you. Oh my gosh, through becoming a master educator. Very good. All right. Oh my God. Like he's, Scotty and him have the same personality. Okay. Do you use the data obtained from assessments in order to monitor? Yeah, we just talked about student progress and guide planning to better meet students' learning needs. Uh, you provide timely and descriptive feedback to guide student progress toward high quality work. That was part of our conversation for the previous standard. Mm -hmm. um, so would, you'd agree with this. You, you provide timely and descriptive feedback to guide student progress toward high quality work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, that's the key. I, I mean, I, I think in the thing I was apologetic about in writing a lesson that my brother came over and we had to swap dryers out. I lost two hours, so I missed marking the stuff. I, and probably I missed paying a little bit more attention to what I was actually going to do for that lesson. Right. I, I just love your brutal honesty. I was kind of smirking with, with that paragraph of explanation. 
Yeah. Um, but life does happen, right? Yeah, life happens, yeah. With our best intentions. Mm -hmm. And we just have to do the best we can with what we got, like you did with 85 students who were told you don't have to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you make proper accommodations and modify testing conditions. Um, so now we're talking differentiation for testing, not mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. Do you draw upon knowledge of appropriate instructional strategies and tech tools to plan instruction that supports each student in meeting rigorous learning goals? Evidence-based strategies, resources, and tech tools effectively to plan instruction that's differentiated to meet the diverse learning needs. What do you think? I got I gotta, I gotta think about that. Um, I mean, to me, to me, that's 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 the name of the game. Okay, let's look at this outstanding. Can they use evidence-based strategies? Okay, yes. Uh, resources. So I find resources. I find tech tools. The more tech tools I got, effectively plan instruction that's differentiated to meet the diverse needs of okay so it's so that's the key that makes it different from proficient yeah 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 now in giving the tech tools the tech tools themselves probably aren't differentiated and right. that's why i worried about the exact definition but it's like from the data ah, that's where you can do your differentiation right yeah yeah, yeah. All right, so do you plan instruction that follows a logical sequence moving from easier examples to harder and including explicit instruction on new concepts? You do. I just want to read what the criteria are. Hit. Yeah, you do. You, so it's this, and furthermore, you adjust and revise your lesson plans to meet the student's needs. It's just, it's, it's a I, yeah. process. That's not even, I know that for a fact that you do that well. Do you use multiple instructional strategies to help students develop deep understanding of content areas and build skills for applying that knowledge in meaningful ways? You continuously monitor students' learning, creates and implements innovative strategies and resources, engages in students, engages students in assessing their progress. So do you do um, self and peer assessment with your kiddos? Do I do so? Is that in there? Um, well, engage in assessing their progress. So engage students in assessing their own progress. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So, so to me, that would be self assessment, and I would throw peer assessment in there too. Mm -hmm. I, you know, so the, there is some peer assessment. Uh, the thing I'm picturing is more along the lines of you've got an ESL class or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, you know, implementing innovative strategies. So I start off with, and I say 70% of, uh, of people are uh, visual learners, 20% auditory and 10% kinesthetic. Um, uh, yeah, we can do some stuff with songs or stuff like that, but I think that's more like the real world has a lot of kinesthetic stuff to it. Mm -hmm. And so now, granted, now you're going to look at, uh, you know, grocery store flyers online, right? But even I think we, we still get sent a thing where you can actually clip things out or something like that. And so you could actually have this thing where you have, you know, maybe students group together and you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to give you $20. Each group has $20. I want you to buy the best basket of food. Okay. And it's maybe, it's got to have, it's got to have uh, some meat and it's got to have some vegetables and it's got to have something I like, and I don't tell them what I like. They're gonna have to guess, and that's the fun thing, right? And so, so, and so they can go look through it. They go ahead and clip their stuff out. They got to be doing stuff like adding in English. You know, I, I, in this one, I try to make sure that I would have 
people, I don't want people who speak the same first language together. Uh, okay. and have to speak in English to each other. And then uh, they go ahead and they do this thing. And then, and then we can sit and we can talk about uh, uh, each other's uh, uh, baskets and, you know, the one group they can critique the other one's baskets mm -hmm. or something like that. And so, so th this kind of thing. And, and then that way it's, um, um, yeah. Okay. I just want to see how many more we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are always here. Uh, do you regularly and effective ask questions to stimulate discussion with the goal of helping students develop higher order thinking skills? Mm -hmm. Stimulate discussion that serves different purposes. <coughs> Probing for student understanding, helping students articulate their ideas and thinking process, stimulating curiosity, help students develop their skills in accessing, interpreting, evaluating, applying information. So we're talking about Bloom's taxonomy here. You regularly effectively ask the questions. What's the addition? Furthermore, you vary your role in the instructional. Yeah, I mean we've talked about this in depth. So you. I, 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 I was gonna. I was gonna say. Yeah. Is there anything in there that would make you think I don't do that? No. So as I. No words, I would ask the question. No, no, no. So we've talked about that in depth, and that, that's absolutely yeah. an easy one for me to say. Absolutely outstanding on that one. Hmm. Um, you participate in professional development, other professional growth experiences this week. Well, we talked about it. We're going to look into it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, this is something I, I, I want and beg for. Um, with uh, Tesla Ontario, it's something I have to do. So, you know, checking into different webinars. Um, yes. Um, right now, this is professional development. Right. What we teach now, so it's like I'm doing it. Question is, would I continue doing it? Um, well, with most organizations, A, I would have to, but B, it's more like if I want to find out how to do something better than I'm doing, or or to learn how to do something, um, you know, it's like okay, well, maybe maybe I'm done teaching now, and I I can chill and relax and actually. I actually, I, I, I do have a couple of goals. One's to start eating yeah. better, the other's to be learning Chinese because after seven years in China, maybe it's about time I learned the language. But that could be time where I could actually go and try to figure out making these movie things because it is kind of slick. It would, it would be kind of cool. Yeah. I can barely speak English when I learn Chinese. I don't go there. I don't go there. Uh. I know your first language was Buffalonian. Buffalonian, yep. With some, you know, what's the Italian equivalent to Spanglish? <laughs> English. <laughs> that's kind of, that's my language. Okay. It's the Italian equivalent of Spanglish. <laughs> do, you, do you know the word embarrassada? Embarrassada? Yeah. It's does a it Spanish mean, word. Does it mean embarrassed or no? No, it means pregnant. No, I'm trying to think. Well, that, 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 that's a, a fun version of L1 interference. Oh. When somebody I'm says, it says, like, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, no, oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, how funny. No, I, I, no. Well, I took French, but I should know Spanish because it's so close to Italian. Mm. No, I, I, I didn't know embarrassada until I took TESOL. Interesting. Yeah. I learned something. Thanks. All right. <laughs> you acknowledge that continuous learning improvement can impact your teaching. Oh, I'm not even going to finish. Yes. We've talked about that a lot. Um, you design and implement culturally relevant learning experiences for students without any personal bias. Um, it looks like the, this adds the parent, the only difference I see is the parent involvement. Let me, let me look at them. Yeah. I understand. 
Access those resource to deepen his or her understanding. Um, the, the key in the outstanding is the person that accesses resources. In other words, wants to get past his or her own personal biases to build stronger relationships. Whereas proficient isn't talking about building um, stronger relationships. So if we look at like, you know, this past week in America, you know, learning to build stronger relationships. I mean, this is about time as if it hasn't been about time for over 50 years. Right. Yeah. Or hundred years, depending on how you look at it. But yeah. yeah. There's um protesting going on here and um messages are going and they're they're scheduled peaceful protests. Mm -hmm. And even a lot of the Buffalo police officers were taking a knee mm -hmm. in solidarity with the protesters. But there's um, white supremacy groups being paid. Mm -hmm. And so um, the peaceful protest organizers in Buffalo here sending out Facebook messages publicly and privately to warn the protesters. Um, saying we understand if you don't want to come don't um it is not us who's doing the looting and the the mm -hmm. violence and it seems like that's going on all over and um you know you got to take information with a grain of salt but this is a first you know coming from a primary source here in mm -hmm. buffalo and my my brother-in-law is a police officer and my sister was telling me that it was peaceful and the police officers were taking a knee here in Buffalo in solidarity mm -hmm. and this other group, and they know when the curfew is. 10.30 is the curfew here. And that's the group that's staying past the curfew causing the problems. Right. And then that's, so, um, and there are in some cities where they're act, they've arrested a CNN. Um, I, I, I've been watching a lot of that live because I do wake up in the middle of the night and my good buddy who has all my stuff in china he actually grew up 20 minute drive from the third precinct wow. uh, was burnt down in minneapolis so yeah um, we've been talking about that a lot in depth but it's yeah, it's, yeah. i'm watching minneapolis very closely mm -hmm. uh, well because i did live there for not in many outside of st paul but still minneapolis and st paul the twin city yeah. it's still yeah. your city you know what i mean exactly yeah and just thinking of yeah. I don't know. So as small as the city as Buffalo is, they're still involved and it did get ugly last night, but it was after their curfew because the peaceful protesters yeah. are obeying the law. Well, I, I think having a 1030 curfew is actually intelligent because people do want to stay out after dark. Yeah. And, the, and these eight o'clock things or whatever are too early to right. get people away. And, right. And, uh, but anyhow. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's weighing heavy on our hearts here. Yeah, I, w I was concerned of one thing with my buddy because I, I asked him where where Mary Tyler Moore lived, and and, and he didn't know. <laughs> he claimed being too young. He's forty seven. Jeez. That was that was my favorite show. I absolutely loved it. And then when Rhoda got her spinoff, I was so excited. <laughs> Because I always liked Rhoda better. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just thought she was more real, more, I don't know. Yeah. I liked Rhoda. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you follow a professional code of ethics and adhere to the relevant laws and policies while teaching and interacting with students? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, you don't follow any of them. All right. So don't forget to upload all your activities and assignments mm -hmm. uh, um i'll write my little narratives oh. my feedback oh. okay okay i'm just gonna do a quick double check i kept mm. checking to make sure it was recording i always get nervous oh yeah i was looking over at the end um, 
okay, well, I was editing a thing in the second thing. The number 11 is incomplete, so okay. you know, the, I'll, I'll be taking a look through and whatever I need to submit up, I'll submit okay. up. Now, I'm not sure if it's disappeared. I'm not getting this warning anymore that I am on extension until June the 1st. Oh, you better. So submit everything tonight by midnight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely do that. And I'll get mine done, too. I'm just going to take a little break before I type up the feedback, but okay. I'll make sure I do that before I fall asleep. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, Could you imagine everything you've hustled and then because of me not getting my stuff done by midnight? No, it, 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 it's, no it, it, it's not that. I mean, I mean that happens, but it, it, it's interesting because